Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and comrades, long live the African Revolution. Long live the African Revolution. I must say thanks to the organizers for inviting me. And the mere fact that you have invited me, it means that you probably believe that I have something important to say. So hopefully I will not disappoint. It gladdens my heart to see that you are seeking to canonize General Bossa in this form. And I, I think that that is worthy of serious commendation. Yeah. Of this very important uprising has not been getting the kind of attention as the celebration of 50 years of bourgeois neo-colonial briefcase independence when the 1816 rebellion was the foundation of all the liberation struggles in this island. In my view, this uprising was the most significant rebellion in the history of Barbados. It was because it was an attempt to utilize violent conflict to uproot a wicked and cruel system of slavery. It was also probably the highest form of struggle for the enslaved to assert their humanity and dignity and demanded that they be seen and treated as human beings. Because chattel slavery sought to tingify the African and sought to reduce the African to less than a human being. So this is why this rebellion was so important. It was also important because it adds to or it made a contribution to the history of enslaved uprisings. So it is also important from that perspective. And this rebellion, as was mentioned before and will be mentioned after, it helped to shake the very foundations of the slave system in the British Caribbean and slavery generally inside of this hemisphere. Now I want to shatter a misconception about Barbadians and Barbadian passiveness because there is this myth that somehow Barbadians were more passive than all of the other islands. And we have to examine the objective and the subjective conditions that was responsible for Barbadians not being as overtly aggressive as, let us say, the Jamaicans. However, from the, from the beginning of chattel slavery in this island, the enslaved resisted. And, and, and we have to remember that the enslaved resisted. They ran away. They got on boats and went down to St. Vincent. They sabotage animals. They sabotage, they sabotage pieces of equipment that were vital for the operation of the sugar plantation. They were plotting and they were planning rebellion. And if you look at the construction of plantation houses, I went in about three of them on the bus tour on Saturday. And these houses were built like fortresses because they recognized as well that the enslaved were not as passive as it is portrayed. Now we have to look at the limitations in, in Barbados as well. Flat, no forests, no mountains, 
large number of whites living on the island. Therefore, the enslaved in Barbados had to be extremely creative. So we have to be mindful of these limitations and don't use the limitations that they were operating in to somehow suggest that the DNA of the enslaved in Barbados was somehow different to the DNA of the enslaved in Jamaica or elsewhere. Now, notwithstanding these limitations, Notwithstanding these limitations, the enslaved were prepared to assert their dignity and their humanity as well. Now, Bussa and Nanny Greg and the vanguard, as well as the people, recognized that they were faced with two options at the particular historic moment, liberty or death. Uh, there was a saying from, I think, H. Rob Brown, the life of a revolutionary is not his own, but it belongs to the people. And this was the thinking of the revolutionaries at the particular moment in 1816, as was best articulated by Nanny Gregg, and I'm glad that you are thinking about Nanny Gregg, when she said that freedom must be taken and not given. So this was a real manifestation of that revolutionary spirit there. Now, the enslaved were well aware of their limitations, but they were also inspired by the fact that the Haitian enslaved fighting against all of the extreme odds, a better trained or better trained armies, better equipped, they were able to defeat the superpowers of the day in France, Britain, and Spain. And this helped to motivate the enslaved. In fact, most of the historians writing on the period said that after 1804, and then after 1807 with the abolition, of the slave trade, there was a, a restlessness within the enslaved population, and this was largely due to the impact of the Haitian Revolution. Nanny Gregg and others were not swayed by the ameliorative project which sought to improve the social conditions of the enslaved. It was freedom or death, right? They were aware as well, because sometimes we tend to think that all of these uprisings were spontaneous. And clearly, this was not the case. In fact, it might have had elements of spontaneity but there was also serious organization within this rebellion. And they were aware of the fracture between the imperial policy design and the local assembly who rejected those imperial directives in the form of the registry bill, which they interpreted was which they interpreted had wider plans of freedom. Now we are well aware of the outcome. Bussa and the freedom fighters of 1816 were defeated by a better arm, better trained opponent. And as I was in St. Philip, on Saturday, and when we used to go, the Pan-African Movement of Barbados, when we used to go to Bailey's every year, somehow you recreate this battle in your mind, and you tell yourself that these revolutionaries were real heroes, because given the fact that St. Philip was so flat, and you can imagine 
soldiers charging at you on horseback, etc., you had little chance of success. If they were mountains and if they were forested areas, because as Amical Cabral was able to demonstrate, and I'm quoting him directly, so I'm, I'm not seeking to criticize the African people, but he said, you know, it is virtually a miracle how people naked in the bush were able to defeat and wear down a better trained and better equipped army. But this was not the case in Barbados. However, these fighters have made an outstanding contribution towards the, the humanity and the dignity of African people, of all people. And they raise the question of freedom to its highest stage of development as well. And in many ways, they helped to fast track the abolitionist initiative of the British, along, as mentioned before, with what would happen in Demerara, what happened in Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, long live General Busa. Long live, the, long live the freedom fighters. Liberty or death. I thank you.